we've got to talk a little bit about the Minnesota Wild, and we've got to lead off with a fun topic. In uh, apparently, Matt Boldy is being ridiculed for what I personally believe was a very reasonable comment. Like basically, they went through and asked a bunch of NHLers, "Hey, what do you think the average shower time is for an American?" And a lot of people are like guessing five, seven, something in those ranges. And Matt Boldy comes in. He's like, well, what the, the average human fuck three and a half. And they're like three and a half. What? He's like, yeah. Have you seen some of the disgusting people around? Like, there's no way that they're doing a full shower. And like, everyone took that as Matt Boldy saying he does a three and a half minute shower. No, he was commenting on how disgusting the average human is and why the, the average time is way lower. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on this Z? Yeah, I I'm in the opposite boat of like everyone's reaction. I feel like he probably this that probably means he takes like that forty minute fucking like let me I have three different body lotions. If you have a three in one, you should be, you belong in prison. He's probably one of those guys, and he's walking around like look at these fucking mangy mutts of human beings. This these people are disgusting. I know. I I bet that guy doesn't even shower at all. That means to me he's probably he's probably unbelievably clean all the time i bet he showers two three times a day maybe um that's how i that's how i took it when he was right. like look at the, it's a very rational take by the way he's like you know also by the way their motherfuckers don't do it right I, dude so twitter yeah. comprehension is like bonkers like everyone took <laughs> it as him being like oh yeah like three and a half minutes max for my shower now i i do have to say though for me personally like if you're outside the five to ten minute range you're it you're either like a serial killer or there's like three reasonable like responses to why you would do that number one you're literally just sitting there and doing self-reflection sitting in the uh the water running on you and you, you might be crying a little bit number one get help <laughs> yeah number one you need help and we've all been there number two you're probably rubbing one out or doing something crazy good for you good for you number three I had a number three. I'm trying to come up with it now. I don't know, dude. It just, I, how hard is it to get in and out of the shower? Like you wash your hair, you wash your body, you get the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The other reason is if you tell your significant other or your wife that you're in the shower the whole time when really you just had like a 15 to 20 minute shit prior to jumping in the shower. Like those are the three paths that make sense. For you to be in the shower longer, you are just in a mental log jam. See, I, I feel like you probably fit into that mold several times. Not nice. You're you're doing something to to please yourself, or you took a big old shit and pretended you were in the shower the whole time. Like though, that's that's the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm like a probably a flat ten. After that, I, you're, I'm just get, I'm just getting bored. I just get bored in there, dude. I'm just like, all right, that's enough of this. Like, I'm done. I just, I, I'm done. I, like, what am I gonna do it here? Um, hey, but we've all been there. Those, but there's like the uh, the first category that you threw out there, like the whew, like just think about that's the uh, the classic, like one hand on the hip, one hand on the wall, like. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, half the time it's like sitting there like on your ass, like knees folded up and you're just like, God damn it. It's going to be okay. Well, it's going to be yeah, okay. Well, um, and we mentioned, or well, like, I mean, I just mentioned that it was like warm here recently and like, I like the cold, but different than Minnesota cold. My dad went to Northern Michigan in the UP. So like their winters are, I like, I mean, it's another level. So he was like, there have been plenty of times where like you would just get, and this was back in the day, like they, their whole thing was just going out into like negative 20 weather for mm -hmm. the entire day. And he was like, yeah, no, usually you just bring a chair into the shower until you basically thaw out. I'm like, all right, that's reasonable for a long shower. <laughs> like, yeah, I just, yeah, I just can't feel anything below my like chin, just thawing out here real quick. So get that. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, wild that fucking the internet was like, oh, ew. <laughs> yeah, Matt Boldy's the gross one here when really he's trying to shame <laughs> the disgusting mutants out there who like literally just like step into the water, step out. They're like, ah, so refreshed. 
Mm, yeah, no. Um, now we got to talk about though, Matt Boldy. Like he until this past game, like guy's been on an absolute tear. Uh, I believe last I counted before that game, it was an eight game streak where he had seven goals, seven assists, and that streak coincided with. Bill Guerin being named GM of Team USA. The tree outs were underway, and like I, Matt Boldy might nudge out Brock Faber for captain of Team USA. Whoa, man. Take it easy. I know. Um, I know. Yeah, he has been, even last night, though. And like, that it's game. Bad. He just wasn't showing up on the yeah, score. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I'm just saying there were so many plays that he made to even just like they had sustained offensive zone time and like Carolina would hold them off, get them. In, I think he must have had four or five takeaways just in the fucking neutral zone, like getting the puck back. And he is fucking so good at a getting the puck back. But like when he enters the zone, there are so many times too where like all other guys change. And he is just hanging on to the puck for such a young kid. And is like, he's a big dude, but he is like lanky, but he's fucking yeah. strong and he's strong on his stick. It's hard to take the puck off of him. I thought he was going to score a fucking buzzer beater. That was a ridiculous play by uh, who was a net last night for Carolina. Oh my God. They batted out of midair right as he was. Oh, was it, was it Kachekov? I think it was. Um, I don't know. I thought he was about to fucking go Tim Stutzel. I thought he was going Stutzel. I thought he was, and fucking what a play by uh by the uh, it, what must have been Kachekov. But um, nice. even last night I thought he was all over the puck, and I mean they played well last night. It's just the same bullshit when they lose. It's just like mm -hmm. that's the, that's I kind of feel like when they even when they're playing well when they lose, it's just like they can't get that fucking extra goal they need, and like they uh -huh. they make me nervous every time they have like a one goal lead. I'm like ah oh, fuck, all right, what's coming back? So they better score again. Okay. <laughs> No, that's but, that's fair. Um, oh, dude, we got some bad fucking news. We've got uh, Mateo dropping yeah, first, followed yeah. by uh, Cole. This is bad, folks. Uh, Tanev to Dallas for a second and a prospect, which first, that's way cheaper than I expected. Uh, I don't know why Vancouver didn't step up to the plate and pay that tab. That's bonkers to me. Um, but yeah, per Friedman, we have... Uh, fucking Chris Tanev going to Dallas, which is like nightmare fuel. Like that is exactly what they needed. This team is primed to go on a run. And granted, like the central is going to be an absolute bloodbath. The West is a bloodbath, to be honest. Like it's weird how it shifts year to year. Like this year, the West, there's going to be six contenders in the West. And mm -hmm. that is not fun for any of those teams. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think I just looked at that from Friedman again. Um yeah, and I was so curious to see if there would be a team that would overpay for Chris Tanev. I feel like that's that's a reasonable about, payment. About right. And and the thing is too, there are so many times at the deadline where like a team will give up a package that you're like, is that really what that guy's worth? And it's like black and white. Maybe it's more than you'd be willing to give up, but for that team, it's a different tier of like what that player is worth. You know what I mean? So, 100%. um, yeah, no, that was, that's a nice, that's a fucking nice pickup for Dallas. They are a problem. <clears throat> Shout out Logan Stankoven, by the way, Dude, I, your boy. I told everyone at the time of the draft, whoever wasn't going to be afraid of the fact that he's like five, eight, five, nine, hundred and whatever pounds he will make you look like an unbelievably smart gm if you just like sack up and fucking take them and dallas gets them not he a shock literally though. uh he yeah no that's you the know, thing that, with dallas I mean, man. dallas like that mm -hmm. is the one yeah draft room that i'll contend can potentially beat judd Brackett. like mm -hmm. we we are full judd disciples here Dallas is the only one that might have his number. Like they have yeah. done such a good job. It's insane. Yeah. And, and I mean, like people know how nasty Wyatt Johnston is. Oh. 
But what people forget is they went on a limb and they took him late in the first round after he did not play a single game that year, his draft year, because it was the COVID year. He didn't play and they still took him in the first round and they're laughing. They are fucking laughing. So, um, you know, got to shout out that scouting department. It's a smart fucking organization. Um, and they pick up Chris Santa. So that team just gets even more fucking deep and they address the need without giving up a first round pick without giving up like anything crazy. So we'll see what happens now. But um, what if, what if Ryan Suter ends up in the press box? Yeah, I'll love it. Um, like he'll would, try to soda fans immediately become Dallas fans. If he was sitting in the press box watching yeah, I, the season, I I, that might be a, uh, that might be a bridge too far. I don't think the only way, happen, especially after last year, I don't think that'll happen, but um, he will probably, he'll probably be like, okay, well, um, this franchise is moving back to Minnesota now. And they're like, oh, no, you don't have the same power and influence you had when you were in Minnesota. Fuck you. We'll go, fuck you, dude. We'll go, shit. No, dude, if they became the North Stars again, it'd be immediate. Who are the Wild? No, I know. Fuck. Um, That's all it would take, as people have shown with those ugly reverse retros. I'm sorry. They're bad. I hate it. You can all love it. I will accept that I'm in the minority and I'm probably wrong somehow, but in my brain, it makes no sense that green and yellow are a good combo. It, it just doesn't work for me. Um, but back to uh, positive topics for the Wilder. Do we want to go? We got two more things here, Z. Do we want to start positive or negative before we go into OHL? Let's get... Let's just go to the negative before we... Yeah, that uh, sounds like you. That stuff. sounds like you. Um, Denny Barlow chimes in. Looks like Duhame may be heading to Vancouver. And uh, subsequently, we've got our favorite granny, gun toting granny. Do you think Duhame is leaving? Lots of talk about it. I mean, I'll just lead by saying the amount that Michael Russo has talked about it, it's happening. Like, he's gone. Otherwise, the discussion would not be going on. And it sounds like Dewar might be in a similar boat. He is gone. I don't know where he's going to go and what the return is going to be. And depending on what the return is and where the team's at, who's going to be healthy, like I can understand it. But Z, I got to push it over to you because you were one of the founding members of Brandon Duhame support group. And Isha still, I don't know if that jersey's lost in the mail somewhere or it's on a boat <laughs> over from China. But uh, I mean, talk about losing our favorite Florida man. Yeah, I would say, I mean, like you said, the fact that Russo, like this has been the one guy that Russo said the most about in, as far as like the deadline this year. Well, and it picked and, up nowhere too, which like means like, oh yeah, he's right. got new information. This shit's happening. Right. Yeah. Um, and realistically, when you look at it, I mean, I feel like actually over the last couple of years, people have like, <clears throat> There have been like way too many for me times where people have soured on Brandon Duhame. Like I get really annoyed when like, I think it was, I don't think it was not last year, the year before, but he was just taking like just the dumbest penalties of all time. And like, so people immediately flipped on him naturally. Um, Listen, I think when you look at just objectively where he's at as a player, he's going to be a guy that, at this deadline could definitely fetch you a decent return, probably something more than like, I I hate saying more than he's worth. That sounds fucking horrible, but I think someone will overpay because he, whether people want to admit it or not, he does have like offensive skill. He can produce certain amounts of offense. He is a worthy guy. Like as far as like a defensive value as well, um, and you kind of run that risk of if you extend them, what is that on a team that has already given out their fair share of extensions for players that were like, I mean, really? Um, it probably just makes sense to move on. And I think, again, like you can probably fetch more of a return than you'd expect for him because, you know, he's what, 26, 27 now? Um, I think I want to say that's all he is. Um, And again, he's got some offensive touch. He brings that playoff style just in terms of like, I will be an asshole all the time. I was hoping, so hoping that the refs would let Bunting get through and let him fight Duhame because that would not have gone well for Michael Bunting. 
And when fuck, I tweeted out the video of Duhame on the bench just laughing at him on the way to the box and like blowing a kiss. Basically, I was like, "Oh, that fucking rules!" <laughs> I love the guy. And they just did that player poll too with Minnesota, where he was the absolute punching bag for every fucking question. Where they were all like, "Who's the player you would least?" like your daughter to date, which people, by the way, get offended by. Apparently that's like a problematic question. Um, and everyone voted do hey or uh, nobody can date my daughter. And he goes, whoa, hey, whoa, I don't like that. I, I hope my girlfriend doesn't see that. <laughs> I was like, so... Yeah, she um, uh, she doesn't have a dad, so it's all good. Um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, the, the crazier thing to me, do you know who got uh, most want to date your daughter? The son of Dean Evison. Mm. Mm -hmm. He also got who spends the most time in the weight room. And they're like, we don't really know what he does in there. But like, he's always in there, which is also very funny. <laughs> very he's for funny. sure just got his iPad in there just crushing through Netflix. <laughs> well, they were like, I'm pretty sure he's like stretching a lot. <laughs> I think that's what they were there, which is like a very funny caveat to the uh, question. But um, well, before we, we before we go too far down that rabbit hole, um, for me, I... I'm very sad. I will be sad when that happens because, again, I do think that they do move on. They do move him. Uh, and probably the same thing with Dewar. But the reason for me in particular that will be, like, even more sad than usual is just the fact – I remember when I first started this – when we first started this podcast and I was doing this by myself, one of the first questions I got was, like, who is a player that you've tracked, like, from, like, just scouting as, like, a prospect – through their draft and then seeing make it. And it was Duhame was the first guy for me that I was like, there is a really yeah. fucking solid player in here. So it's, it's going to, I don't know. In terms of like this, the, the sentiment stuff, like it'll suck to see him go, but I do think it totally. makes sense. Cause like, it, it makes can't... sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I, I and, right, quick though, before, cause like we're already too far from it, but yeah, I, don't care because it's just, I don't know how we do this. It's such a good quote. On the, the piece with Freddie Goudreau stretching so much. Ron Swanson, Parks and Rec, getting <laughs> interviewed. Do you have a history of mental illness? I have an uncle who does yoga. <laughs> oh, just nonstop so quote machine. Ah, it's so good. Um, but uh, I got to ask you, because I actually have a strong opinion, and it's actually like kind of a lame opinion, I guess. But where do you want to see Duhame go? If it's not Minnesota, obviously, because I've got not a, a very clear answer, and I for practical reasons, but also like kind of low hanging fruit reasons too. Pittsburgh, no, <laughs> no, it's not your answer. Going. Pittsburgh should not be adding. Pittsburgh should not be adding right now. They should be uh, doing the opposite of adding. Yeah, uh, uh, subtracting. Yes, I would take him here. I'd take him in Boston, baby. You know what? I think it would fit. I think it makes sense. Uh, my pick is Florida. Oh, God. Yeah. They it's in with that well. group so well. And just again, Florida man being returned to his natural habitat. That's fun. But like his, the way he plays the game and the energy he brings, like imagine putting him in a room with Matthew Kachuk. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'm already getting emotional just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good one. Um, the thing with them is they just have like their bottom six is filled with those guys already. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see what they do, but that, yeah, no, that's a, it would fit unbelievably well. Yeah. All right. Last Minnesota wild topic, because we have to address this because we have a Judd's buds graduate in the fold. That's right. Uh, John Robinson. Hope you discuss the piss missile later best t-shirt moniker now i i have to say here though z cosgrove wrote it here in the comments i'm gonna show it i'm real bummed that he wrote it in the comments because i've been sitting on this one for like over a year i am all about it all i see every time i read who's nadinov is who's nuts d's nuts it straight up like that is that is his moniker i literally already made a custom jersey i'm not gonna buy it but a custom jersey with on the back it's just who's nuts Buy it, coward. Buy it, coward. Yeah, except I'm pretty sure fanatics won't spell it right. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they'll still <laughs> fuck that up. Um, I could give them the automatic, and they'd be like, uh, Kovalchuk. <laughs> yeah, I think this is what you were looking for. Uh, Kovalev, yes, yes, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it happened. It finally happened. We've been waiting for it. I am very excited, very happy that he... And by the way, unlike those absolute fucking pieces of shit scumbags over at Ska St. Petersburg, fucking Putin's team, um, and that loser of a coach, I think it's, I forgot how to say his name, Rottenberg or whatever. Um, so she could have not terminated that contract early. They could have tried their hardest to get him to stay because I believe that contract should have end i think it was supposed to end in april and a april lot of 30, times yeah. those kate yeah yeah the end of april so basically may um a lot of times those khl teams will you even if they miss the playoffs they will use this time to try to get those guys to stay which hey fair enough i'm not saying like oh fuck the khl for doing that like fair enough like right. if you, you want, want to keep your good players totally get it totally yeah. no problem um, because they missed the playoffs and I think they kind of read the writing on the wall. Good. But like shout out to them for like terminating the contract so we could sign. And I mean, he signed like a couple hours later. <laughs> so, um, it finally happened. We knew he wanted to come over here as soon as he could. Um, and according to Bill Guerin, we've heard this before. Um, but he said that he will play. So we should be seeing him in the lineup at some point. I this wonder is, if that'll come in. His chance to prove himself. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, wait, wait. What do you think driveway shooting is like in Russia? Yeah, we don't. We don't know. We can't know. It was just you know. <laughs> um, I I kind of wonder if like him getting into the lineup will coincide with either Duhame or Dewar or both leaving. Because I mean, when he starts, he will be in that bottom six, which is fine because I think he plays the same way regardless of his, where he is in the lineup. Um, and again, like, I don't think he'll need a whole lot of like minor league time before he can prove himself to be NHL ready. I mean, it's going to be a big jump. It's just because he is, li li he is the five foot 10 on a good day, hundred and whatever pound. <laughs> like he is a slight human being, but he has played 150 games in the KHL last year. We saw him play at like a borderline elite level. He's an unbelievable skater. He plays a phenomenal two-way game. I think it shouldn't take a whole lot of time for him to like just adapt to the NHL game in general because it's kind of just his mold anyways. Um, but just very excited that it's finally official because two years ago we were like, okay, here we go at the end of this year. And then scumbag ska they uh did the thing where like they just benched them until they got him to sign that two-year deal and then they try to bench him again at the start of this year so whatever but what if um, they adopted that like there's a guy that's not like signing or extending and they're just like fine we're just gonna fucking bench you forever yeah yeah by the uh -huh. way we got your rfa rights this summer have fun <laughs> yeah fuck off uh yeah where hmm, that'd be hmm, that'd, never heard of that um but just excited it's official can't wait for to like see him in the lineup he gets 22, uh, which is Yurov's number. Yurov might have a word with somebody, um, even though he's not coming over here, but whatever. But either way, at least we got some good news. Um, and I'll be very curious to uh, see when he makes his way over here, gets in the lineup, and uh, yeah, just nice to see it official. But shout out, shout out, who's, you know, 162 games of the KHL, 75 points. Um, a bulk of those came last year when he was playing top six minutes on a very good Scott team um, before they decided to bench him this year. Um, and I think there were some quotes from the Sochi coach where they were like, obviously the offense wasn't really his fault. He was kind of like shitting on his own team. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, obviously it was a world of difference going from Scott to Sochi, but he was still an elite defensive four on this team. Like by the end, by the end of his season this year, he was already the captain. He was a captain of Sochi like within like a month and a half of him getting there. So um, just nice to see him sign and can't wait to see him in the lineup. So uh, yeah, we had some good news at least.